Hi right, folks, in this video we are going to discuss the Gram-Schmidt process. We will attempt an example by hand keyword there on attempt, and after that attempted example, we will move on to the Gram-Schmidt process coded up in uh, Octave slash MATLAB, and then also Python. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns throughout the process of this video, don't hesitate to let me know, and you can find all the code shown in this video at the GitHub link in the description down below. But without further ado, folks, let's begin. All right, so the Gram-Schmidt process, what is it? Well, it's a process by which we can take some set of vectors and produce a set of orthonormal vectors. Uh, the limitation on this is that we can only use this process on a set of vectors uh, that has a total number of vectors less than or equal to the uh, space that we're working in. So let's say that we're working in a three space, we could use this process on a set of two vectors or a set of three vectors, but not a set of four vectors. And why might we want to do this? Well, uh, with a set of orthonormal vectors, we have a well understood relationship between all of the vectors in the set that we can go ahead and exploit later on down the line in some larger processes. We know that a set of orthonormal vectors are all uh, orthogonal, or that their in the inner product between all the vectors is zero, and they are normalized, so the two norm of each one of the vectors is one. So to go from some set of vectors x to some set of vectors y, where y, uh, where our y set of vectors is our orthonormal set of vectors, we're going to follow this general procedure. Uh, first, we're going to set uh, some vector v1 equal to uh, x1. It's just going to be the first vector of our set. Then we're going to normalize it to get our y1 vector. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, just taking that v1 vector and dividing it by the 2 norm of itself. Now, it doesn't stay this easy, obviously, because for the second vector, we're going to set this next uh, vector v2 equal to x2 minus the projection of our x2 vector on y1. So we need to actually compute our y1 vector first. Then we're just going to normalize that v2 vector. Uh, so v2 divided by the 2 norm of v2, and that is going to be our y2 vector. v3 is going to be our x3 vector minus the projection of x3 on v1, and then also minus the projection of x3 on v2. And hopefully you can see the pattern that's going on here. We're then, of course, going to normalize it, which is v3 divided by the 2 norm of v3, and that is our y3 vector. And that's how we're going to produce a set of orthonormal vectors. Okay, so more generally, once we get past establishing the first vector in our orthonormal set of vectors, we're just going to be taking uh, all these projections and subtracting them off of whatever vector uh, we're on from our first set. So here you can see it's going to be uh, Vn is equal to Xn minus the projection of like Xn on V1, Xn on V2, uh, up to uh, how up to uh, N minus 1 effectively. Then of course we can't forget we have to normalize uh, once we go about establishing this. So we're just going to take that V vector and divide by the 2 norm of that vector. That's going to give us uh, the y vector for our orthonormal set of vectors. Alrighty, so we're going to attempt an example here, and I say attempt because you're going to see really quickly that this becomes a mess of arithmetic, and personally, I'm not the biggest fan of doing a lot of arithmetic by hand. I know that, you know, for some mathematicians, they really love it, but I personally don't, so at a certain point, I'm going to get fed up and just say, let's have the machine do it, but let's get started with this. So we have this set of three vectors, the first vector being 3, 2, 1, second vector 3, 3, 3, and the third vector 10, 5, 5. It's not orthonormal already. I'll allow you to compute the inner products uh, yourself to see that. But let's go ahead and try and establish our first vector right here. So we'll start off with v1 equal to x1 here. Simple and straightforward enough. Now we need to normalize it, so let's compute the 2 norm here. Okay, so that's going to give us root 14. So our y1 vector is then just going to be this v1 vector divided by this uh, 2 norm. So that is our y1 vector. Now you can see with that 1 on root 14 out front that the arithmetic here is not particularly going to be fun. So now let's find y2. So we'll start off with v2. 
which is going to be equal to x2 minus the projection of x2 on y1. So if we expand this out in terms of inner products right here, it's going to look a little bit like this. Okay, so actually going through this now, we're going to have to carry through that 1 on root 14 term, which is just not going to look nice. Okay, you can see we have all these fractions already right here. This is not something that's too scary to simplify, so let's do that real quick. Okay, so simplifying this, we still have a really annoying fraction out in front. That could be simplified down to 9 sevenths if we really wanted to, but that doesn't change the fact that we're already running into just tons of fractions and a lot of arithmetic that is just not fun to do by hand. And I, I'm, honestly, I'm willing to wager without even checking my work that I made some error in here. I, but you can see already, this is already becoming uh, quite a bit of a mess. And and this is why we have computers, so that computers can handle all this stuff much faster than us. So let's just jump straight away into the code, and we're just going to cut off this example right here. Hopefully you see from this example, though, which is what I want to show, is just that doing this by hand really is not fun at all, unless you love doing a lot of arithmetic. All right, so jumping over to the code, we're going to start off in Octave, which is not too different from MATLAB. So for those of you MATLAB coders out there, this also will hopefully be helpful to you. We're going to start off with this first function called Gram-Schmidt. It's going to accept an A matrix and return a matrix called a Q. And the reason why we're using a matrix is because we're actually going to be sliding each vector into the column of a matrix. So hopefully you can see a little bit of foreshadowing as to where we're going with this. We're going to group the set of vectors as a matrix because matrices are really easy to use on a computer, okay? So in this function, the first thing we're doing is we're getting the size or the dimensions of our matrix. Then we're going to establish our Q matrix with all zeros using the dimensions of our A matrix. Okay, then right away after establishing uh, our Q matrix, we are going to be taking uh, care of that first vector in our orthonormal set of vectors. We're going to take the first column from our A matrix, normalize it, and that is our first orthonormal vector, just like what we did before. Then this first loop here is going to kick off the first part of our projections. So we're going to set each subsequent vector uh, Q equal to A. So that's going to be like kind of our, our, our V vector from what we were using before. And then this loop right here is going to start out all the projections going forward. So we're setting uh, VN equal to XN. And then in this inner loop, we're doing all those projections. Then right at the end, we are taking that V vector uh, that we're storing kind of in our in our Q matrix as a column, and we are normalizing that column. This next function here just computes the inner product, but the inner product between all of the columns of this Q vector, once we produce it using the Gram-Schmidt process and this Gram-Schmidt function, should be zero between all these different vectors. Then down here, we are generating a random A matrix that is three by three with values between zero and 10. We're computing all the inner products of that A matrix to ensure that they are not uh, orthonormal already or that the columns are not orthonormal already. We're using the Gram-Schmidt process to produce uh, our Q matrix, which again, hopefully you can kind of see the foreshadowing as to where we might be going with this. Then we're computing the inner products and we're doing this last little check right here, which I'll explain more once we run this code. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run this code in Octave, this Gram-Schmidt code. And you can see that on my machine, it's giving me this little uh, warning message we can just ignore. So here we have our A matrix. When computing all the inner products, you can see clearly it is not orthogonal uh, or even orthonormal for that matter. Then we go ahead and we have this Q matrix that our Gram-Schmidt process produced. And notice that the inner product between all of these is on very small orders. So 10 to the negative 16, 10 to the negative 17, 10 to the negative 15, all those we can chalk up to be floating point arithmetic error and round those to be zero. So the inner product is zero between all these. So everything's checking out. 
But notice this other check that I'm doing right here where we're taking our Q matrix and we're multiplying it by Q transpose. I'll let you go ahead and take a look at this matrix to see if you recognize any pattern. Hopefully you see that there's ones along the diagonal and that there's really, really small numbers, again, that we could chalk up to floating point arithmetic error on the off diagonals. We can leverage this bit of knowledge to do some pretty powerful things. All right, let's just run this one more time to just make sure that everything's, you know, happening the same way we want it to. And again, we see the same thing. Here's our A matrix. The inner products are uh, obviously not zero, so these are not orthogonal or orthonormal. Here's a Q matrix that's being produced. Again, a bunch of decimals, so you don't really want to do this by hand. All our inner products here are on order of 10 to the negative 16, so we could chalk that up to a floating point arithmetic error, and we can just go ahead, round those to be zero. And this additional check right here, we see the same uh, interesting pattern with ones along our diagonal in really small numbers, again, that we could chalk up to being floating point arithmetic error on the off diagonal. And that's going to be uh, a really important bit of information uh, that we can exploit all right, onto the Python code. This doesn't change up too much. We're going to use NumPy to manage all the uh, matrix type stuff right here, but everything doesn't change too much from the Octave or MATLAB code. We're defining this function called Gram Schmidt. It is accepting an A matrix. The first thing we're doing is getting the dimensions of that A matrix. Then we are establishing our Q matrix with all zeros using the dimensions we got from before. Right away, we are going ahead and establishing that first column or the first vector of our set of orthonormal vectors. Then we are kicking off our looping by setting v2 equal to uh, x2, or in, in this case, the second column of our Q matrix equal to the uh, second column or the nth column going on down the line of our A matrix. This inner looping here takes care of our inner products and everything with computing those projections. And then once we subtract off all those projections, we can just go ahead and normalize the column of that matrix, which gives us the next vector in our set of orthonormal vectors. In the main function, we're pretty much doing the same exact thing from before. We're generating a random 3x3 three three matrix with values between 0 and 10. We are computing our Q matrix with our Gram-Schmidt function. And then rather than go ahead and just compute all the different inner products, we are just going to use that check from the octave code from before. All right, when we go ahead and run that code, you can see here we have our A matrix. Then our Q matrix is, again, filled with a bunch of decimals, so we don't want to do that by hand. In our check, which is Q by Q transpose, or actually in this case, I believe it's Q transpose by Q. Let's pop that up on the screen here. Yeah, it's Q transpose by Q. We can see uh, ones along our diagonal, very small values uh, on the off diagonals. And when we go ahead and round that, you can see that we get the identity matrix. And again, this is a very valuable piece of information that we can use to do some pretty fantastic things. If we go ahead and run that one more time, just double check it again. You can see right here, here's our A matrix. Here's our Q matrix. Again, a bunch of decimals. I don't want to be computing that all by hand. And then we have our check here, very small values on the off diagonal. And when we go about rounding that again, we get the identity matrix. So, folks, that is the Gram-Schmidt process. Hopefully, you can see the foreshadowing of where we're going with this. Hint, hint, wink, wink. We're going to be doing some matrix decompositions. That said, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to let me know. I want to thank you all very much for your time, and I'll hope to see you again next time. Thanks.